Good afternoon. Well, in January 2022, I was actually enjoying my winter vacation until my mom reminded me that I currently barely have any equipment for college education. That is due in eight months. And then she added, if you can't go to a good college, then you can't find a good job. That means that you can't promise your future girlfriend a stable life because you can't make a living. And I think she has a great point. While all my classmates are striving for standardized tests, I was basically doing nothing except randomly playing music and chilling. Well, and then I realized that none of my recent business is conducive to my future. Well, I, uh, I read novels, I did some creative writings, and I composed at times, and uh, I studied Chinese literature. And all of these, all of these, they're just meaningless. Why on earth would an international student need Chinese literature? And then, after the winter vacation ensues my great failure, my standardized test, all of these, all of these pains, they just make me contemplate. The funny thing is that I'm the kind of person that will only contemplate under pain. Well, what is the thing that's making me painful? What is the thing that is making me sink into the abyss of pain? What is making me languish my face? It was then that I found out that it was the dilemma. The dilemma that makes everything painful. Well, we the people are actually all living in all extents and kinds of dilemmas. But what is the dilemma? You've all heard the word dilemma. It's not a new word, it's a TOEFL slash SAT word. But what is the dilemma? How could we tell if we are killing in a dilemma? I would like to bring up a famous author who himself is well known famous for depicting and experiencing the dilemma, Franz Kafka. And he is one of my favorite authors. As one of the pathfinders of modernist novels, Franz Kafka actually derives all of his thoughts from the Well, actually, he himself lived in a bunch of dilemma. He worked, uh, he worked at an insurance company, but he did the test work in there because he hated, he hated such painstaking and boring job. But he has to because otherwise he cannot even make a living. And also, he pursues love, but he's so self-abased that he could not even directly talk to a female. He lived in the total of dilemmas, but it was the, these dilemmas that made his writing better. Really. Actually, his writing manner was so unique that scholars nowadays refer to his writing manner as Kafkaesque. And scholars nowadays made up a little jargon for him, and that is called Kafkaesque dilemma. Well, in order to get the definition, let's now consult our great man of dilemma here and see a starting paragraph of his famous short novel, The Countryside Doctor. I was in great difficulty. An urgent journey was facing me. A seriously ill man waited for me in a village ten miles distant. A severe snowstorm filled the space between him and me. I had a carriage, a light one with large wheels entirely suitable for our country roads. Wrapped up in first with a bag of instruments in my hand, I was already standing in the courtyard ready for the journey. But the horse was missing. The horse. It's just like, wow, wow, to read this. So like, we could authentically feel the dilemma, the vastness of pain within the dilemma's vividly shown, right? The countryside doctor himself wanted so much to go to the patient's house, but he cannot. He just cannot. It is not that he's not willing to do so, he just cannot. He's, he's deprived of anything that could help him go there. He has a carriage. A light one, but a carriage that fits well in the countryside roles, but he has no horses. He has no horses. It's like how difficult a person could be. But he also could not choose to stay at home. He's, he's a doctor. It's his obligation to go to the patient's house. But he can't go there. How difficult a person could be. Now, return to the question itself. 
What is the lama? The lama is something like this. When none of the choices we have currently could solve our problems, or as to say, neither of the choices, yes or no, no matter what we choose, they cannot be beneficial, then we are in a dilemma. Then why? Why on earth that we often feel that we are so unable and weak that none of the choices we have to solve our problems are we I got two reasons for that. The first reason is that actually our aspirations and desires are often too hard to be achieved. As to say, our ideal goal always doesn't match the reality. I believe that is something that most of us have experienced. Let's say this. If you just don't want and you just don't need that much from your life and future, then all of these damn dilemmas are just so readily. For instance, if you just sit there every day in your cozy couch and just watch anime every day and just wait for the offers from some, some kind of bogus colleges to come and you open your email and, and, and it says that we want you but we are not in a real top college but we still want you then everything is relaxing and fine, you don't need to care about those things. No dilemmas you want. For another instance, if you just left your GPA, your extracurricular activities and your standardized test, you left them behind, behind your mind, then everything will be relaxing and fine, isn't it? We won't even acquaint ourselves with the weird word dilemma. Dilemma that we do as much, right? We want it so bad. The dilemma, as students, the dilemma that we are experiencing is like this. We can't choose to study because we want to relax. We can't choose to relax either because we are obligated to study. Well, we, the youngsters, also invented a little jargon for that, and that is called Batman. And the second reason I have, I don't know if this is something that is rooted in our culture or not, but a lot, of, a lot of times, as Chinese people, we feel that we are in dilemma because we are being compared to others. Or we are comparing ourselves to others. Let's say this. The, 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 the reason why that I don't like to have lunch with my relatives, like my second uncle, or my third aunt, or all those relatives, or my cousins, I don't like to have lunch with them. Because each time I was having lunch with them, they would compare me to them. They would compare me to their own children. And it's like this. Each time I was just eating and enjoying it, like eating pizza or something, my mom, she would just stare at me. She would stare at me out of nowhere. Just unfathomable. She would stare at me. And out of the, out of the blue, she would get irritated. She would become angry. So unfathomable. Or her logic is like this, because each time she would compare me to those students who go to Princeton or Harvard or Yale, and then she realizes that, oh, my own son just sucks. <laughs> <laughs> my own son just sucks like this. And that's why my mom is also all the period of nowhere. More severe situation will happen during the year, especially all those students who are there. And my mom, would, she would generally compare me to each of the children of my relatives, each of my cousins. Well, how much the dwarfing of those people? Then there won't be much verbal fights between me and them. And I won't be sitting into this weird dilemma. Now, return to the question itself. Here comes the essential question. How should we react to that? How should we cope with that? Well, primarily I would say that we need to first recognize the value of that. Yes, dilemmas do have value. It's like this. A lot of times, actually the product of dilemma, the pain and sorrow, as to say the emotional benefits, they would put people under certain calm and rational state of thinking. I would not be. Actually, a lot of us would generally think and contemplate while we're in pain, especially when we're emotional. Because at that time, we would generally rethink about each of the things that happen in our life. 
we will generally reconsider each of the choices we made in our life. Because pain gives us rationality, while joy will only offer us irrationality. And that is what it indicated the intrinsic value of that. And also, let's talk about it. the musician and artists, the creators of art. Actually, they gain their inspirations from the artists. Speaking of my expertise, I like to mention a famous musician, Franz Schubert. Franz Schubert wrote his famous scenery when he was experiencing and suffering from his unrequited love. Well, actually, all of his dilemmas are caused by love affairs. Because he has such longings for love, but he was just unattractive. He was short, he was overweight, he was, uh, he was not good looking, but he still pursued for love. And that's why he was suffering because of that love all the time. But, but, however, we have to know that these dilemmas, it was these dilemmas that made his musical career extremely successful. Because you have to know that Schubert actually only lived for 31 years. Yet he composed hundreds and thousands of musical pieces. Those art songs, those piano pieces, those orchestra works, those quartets, those violin concertos. And all of them are still classic nowadays. What made him do this? What made him do this? The dilemma. The dilemma is his muse. The dilemma is his inspiration. The dilemma made him find the beauty of notes. And that's why we need to recognize the value of dilemmas. And also, and also, we need to accept dilemmas. We need to acknowledge the existence of dilemmas instead of escaping from them. A lot of us are just so inca so incapable of bearing dilemmas. And as the pain and sorrow caused by dilemmas, they accumulate to a certain extent and passes through a certain threshold. And people can't bear it anymore. What would happen next? People will generally commit suicide. And this is how suicide is often caused. And at this point, in order to avoid this tragedy, please don't be tough. Please, you have to acknowledge that at this point that you are vulnerable and weak. Well, as to say, you have to say this to yourself. I suck. Okay, you have to say this. You have to say this to yourself a million times every day because you can't be tough at this point. Okay, you need to emotionally accept the fact that you are in the dilemma and you suck at it. Great. I believe that you won't train yourself to be strong in front of a tiger, will you? Same logic goes here. You can't train yourself to be tough in front of a dilemma. You need to emotionally accept it. Instead of bluntly giving yourself the pre, pre assumption that, oh, I am strong, I am powerful, I am powerful, that none of the dilemmas could beat me. No, you suck. <laughs> you suck in front of the dilemmas. You will have to admit that. Okay. This could not be a bad You're just going to leave the dilemma like an elf in the room, no? Because as you emotionally accepted the dilemmas. That means that you are now able to think calmly and rationally how am I going to do, how am I going to work out of the dilemma. That's what you're Because otherwise, you're going to just sink into the abyss of pain and generating a horrible consequence like committing suicide. And also, another way is to jump out of it. Being in a dilemma means that none of the choices we're going to have are beneficial. Then, this indicates that we need to find other conduits towards the, the solution. As to say, if this stamp life didn't live, left us with any solutions, then we're going to make ourselves one. If we don't have choices, then we're going to make ourselves one. It's like this. Sometimes, actually, if we change our way of approaching the dilemma, then actually we will find a better conduit. If you are sinking into a swamp in the Amazon rainforest of some kind of uh, a wildlife habitat of crocodiles and stuff, 
You have no tools in your hand, there's no human beings around you, and you're far away from land, and you're running a strength to climb out of it. Why should you do that? Why should you do that? You're basically left with no choices. And how about just approach it differently? How about just stay still? Then after 10 seconds, you will find yourself peaceful, staying still, and not thinking anymore, and you're safe from now. And that is how thinking jump out of the dialogue works. If we have no choices, we make ourselves of them. And also, our ultimate tool to deal with dilemma is to adapt to it. We need to adapt ourselves to the dilemma. A lot of us, I believe a lot of us, all those, all, all those um, our parents and stuff, they're going to tell you, you're doing a dilemma, you need to walk out of it. You need to combat it. You need to solve your dilemma. No. Because the reason why, you forgot that the reason why dilemma is called a dilemma is because you can't solve it. Otherwise, it's called a problem. Instead of the word D-I-L-E-M-M-A. The reason why it's called a dilemma is because you can't solve it. What are you going to do? You need to live with it. You need to adapt yourself to it. It's just like the pandemic we're experiencing right now. All of us, the doctors, the hospitals, and all those workers, all the scientists, the students, including us here, who is striving to solve the stand problem of coronavirus? But has any one of us succeeded? No. None of us has has succeeded. Well, all of us want to hang out with our friends or spend time traveling, but can we? No. On the other hand, do we want to stay at home and be in quarantine? No. This is the real life that I'm very experienced right now. It seems like that. Oh, we suck. We can't do anything about this. We're just leaving like this. But actually, the fact that we've already won the battle against virus. We've already walked out of the dilemma because we've adapted ourselves to it. We, the human beings, managed to make this world function again even though we can't even see each other in real life. We, the human beings, work online and we have classes online. How great we are in this sense. We, don't, we have already won the battle. We've already deal with the dilemma. It's just like how Dr. Zhang Wen commented, we need to live with the virus in the future. <clears throat> or I believe now we can transform this quote into we need to live with dilemma in the future. Because the moment that we've made dilemma our friend, there are no more enemies in our lives. Thank you so much.